Right, I'm going to read uh, a section um, from the early part of the book uh, at, at Michael's request. <laughs> and it's uh, in the prison, in Berlin prison. Uh, bear with me because I've not read this or rehearsed. Normally I rehearse these things so I don't stumble over words, and so I may well do that. Around him the night sounds of the prison continued. He had grown used to the coughs and the murmurs and the footsteps. He'd even found comfort in them, just as he had in the routines of prison life. When the judge sentenced David McCall, he showed no emotion. It stung that he'd been sent away on perjured evidence, even if he'd actually committed the warehouse robbery, but four years inside didn't worry him. He could handle it. He had never been jailed before, never been to Borstal. Earlier that year, he'd spent his first night in a police cell following a square go in Duke Street, but that hadn't exactly prepared him for life in the big house. His mind, though, was filled with thoughts of his father's sudden reappearance, and he wandered through the induction process in a fog. He was aware of orders being barked by stern-faced prison officers, providing his personal details, being given a prison number as well as a striped shirt and jeans, showering, then a quick medical, bend over, cough, head rape for lice, and questions designed to assess if he was a suicide risk. There was no question of non-compliance. He and the rest of the prisoners were herded from one point to the next, making Davy think of the cattle in the slaughterhouse in Duke Street he used to pass on his nighttime walks. He was a meat eater, but he always dreaded coming so close to that grey building with its sharp angles and its sense of death. None of the men here were destined for death, no matter how heinous their crime, but they were little more than cattle all the same. That was how prison worked. Routine, order, discipline. Then he was put in one of the dog boxes. The tiny compartments, little more than a cupboard with a single bench at the back, were a way station for prisoners while paperwork was being processed. It was only a few square feet and would have been claustrophobic enough if it was the only one in it, but there were two other guys already waiting when the prison officer ordered Davy inside and slammed the door shut. He pressed himself against the door and looked at his new companions wedged side by side on a narrow bench, their shoulders pressed hard against the walls on either side. He had never felt this before, this sensation of the walls closing in on him, and it was a tense two-hour wait until they were taken out. Davy had never felt relief like it. Berlini had five wings, each called a hall. Davy's new home was in B Hall, and the cell he shared in the second gallery with one other inmate, a petty thief called Tom from East Kilbride, was larger, larger than the dog box at least. However, it was still no sweet at the Waldorf, with two slot buckets in the corner that reeked continually of stale urine and shit, and a single slatted window so high up the wall that all they could see through it were ribbons of cold grey Glasgow sky. His cellmate, his co-pilot, as they called him in the jail, was an okay guy, if a bit dodgy, and David resolved to keep a close eye on him, on whatever he had. But he generally kept himself to himself, which suited David. David resolved to get through his sentence as easily as he could. He would give the screws no trouble. He would be a model prisoner and get out to resume his life, to get back to Audrey. So the months passed and David's release date grew closer as he settled into the routine of being locked down, slopping out, working, making concrete slabs in the cobblers of the laundry, lunch, exercise, work, tea time, lockdown, recreation, supper and lockdown. Then, the next day, it all started again. Slopping out, work, meal breaks, exercise, lockdown. Every day the same. Every day being yelled at by grim-faced prison officers. Every day hearing the alarm bells go off somewhere and seeing the officers running to contain some trouble, for Berlini was full of violent men and the violence within them must boil over. Davy McCall had violence in him, he knew that, but he fought hard to keep it bottled up. And he succeeded, until Donald Harris came along. <laughs> 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 <laughs>